Hello, welcome to Unity Tutorial 1. In this tutorial, we're going to be making our very own third-person controller. Um, so, uh, before we even go into Unity, um, I just want to kind of talk about um, uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, so, um, our character is going to be really um, simple. Our character is just going to be um, just a capsule. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna start with the capsule. Um, so here's here's our character. Um, uh, so just as a reminder, um, our capsule is gonna have what's called a capsule collider, which is that invisible green shape which shows uh, where stuff uh, bumps into it. Oops. Um, So we have, our, uh, we have our capsule, we have the collider, so that's um, another component on our capsule. We're going to add um, uh, a third component, which is called a character controller. Um, and a character controller is a Unity component, which we add to our um, our capsule, which will allow us to uh, move it. Okay, um, it's it's really handy. Uh, so, oops. Uh, so, in order to move our character, what we need to do is we need to take um, the player's inputs, which is going to be um, from the arrow keys or W A S A N D, and we're going to need to turn that. So if the player is pressing the up key, we need to turn that into a direction. Okay. And so the way that directions work in Unity is um, if we uh, imagine um, uh, a control stick, right? Um, and you're not pressing on the control stick. Um, uh, that means, um, uh, well, let's start with the direction. So if we imagine a control stick and we press the control stick up, what that does is it gives us an uh, an up value of one. If we press it down, we get uh, a vertical value of negative one. Um, if we press it to the left, we get a horizontal value of negative one. We press it or to the right, and we get a horizontal value of one. Okay. Uh, and so what we have here is we have two different numbers that go from zero to one, or from negative one to one, uh, in either direction. And by combining those two numbers, we can get a direction. Um, and so this works like on a coordinate plane where in the center is 0, uh, comma 0. Over here um, is 1, comma 0. Up here is 0, comma 1, uh, negative 1, 0, um, 0, negative 1. Um, because uh, our um, our horizontal value is going to be the first number, our vertical value is going to be the second number. Um, so for instance, if we wanted to go uh, this diagonal direction, that would be a value of 1, 1. This diagonal direction, negative 1, 1. Negative 1, negative 1. And 1, negative 1. So here we have kind of our eight different values. Now we can get values um, that are like smaller than one. Um, if you don't press the control stick as hard, uh, et cetera. Um, so just as an example, um, negative 0.5, 0.5 uh, would be like right about here. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to collect these two numbers. Okay. And that's going to be our forward and backward motion. And our left and right motion. Okay, so we're going to turn that direction into these motions. Now we also need to get our um, 
up and down motion. So if you jump, you move up. If, you, uh, if you're not jumping, then gravity is pulling you down because we're going in three spaces. So we need three values. We need a horizontal, um, a vertical, and then, or yeah, a, a left and right, a forward and back, and then up and down. So that's going to be our three, val our three values. Uh, and that gets stored in a unity type called a vector three. And a vector three has an x value, a y value, and a z value. So we're going to get these this x, y, and z value, and then we're going to give it to the character controller, and the character controller is going to make our character move. Um, so uh, let's go into Unity. Okay, so we have a new project here. Um, so in order to keep our project uh, organized, I want to create some folders. So I'm going to create a scripts folder. I'm going to create a materials folder. Oops, I created that in the scripts folder, so I'm just going to drag it back into assets. Materials, scripts, and I'm going to create a scenes folder. Okay. Um, so this is our uh, this is a new scene. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to save it as character controller. I'm going to drag this character controller scene to my scenes folder. I'm going to create another folder uh, called prefabs, which uh, went into our scenes folder. I'm just going to drag it back to assets. Um, so now we have materials, prefab, scenes, and scripts. Um, so we need to set up um, a place for our character to walk around. So uh, let's create a cube for that, or a plane. Mm, let's use a plane. So this is going to be our plane. I'm going to set it to position x, y, and 0. It's easy, easy. So a vector 3 is also a position. It's also a rotation. It's also a scale. Um, and I'm going to increase the scale to 5, 5, 5. Um, so now I have a nice big area for our, our third person character to walk around in. Um, and I'm also going to give it a color. So I'm going to open up materials, go to create material, and I'm going to give it a green color so it can be kind of like grass. So I named my material green. I'm going to click on this little color box to change the color to green. I'm going to drag that off my ground. Sorry about the helicopter. Um, so there's our ground. Now we need a character. And so our character is going to be this purple capsule. So um, just to prepare, I'm going to create another material, give it purple. And I'm going to give it a color. Um, and so um, this this uh, perp this material inspector window is coming up because I have my material selected, so that's how I'm able to edit this material's color. Um, so to create our character, let's just create a 3D object capsule. It looks like it's below the ground. So if we move it to 0, 0, 0, that'll put it um, right in the center of our map, and then I can uh, drag up the character so it's just above the ground there and uh, give it the purple color I'll just drag it over here okay um, so we have our we have our player basically and remember one thing we needed was a character controller uh, and so the way we add a character controller is just a it's a component and it'll add to our kind of list of we have four components right now transform Mesh filter, capsule collider, mesh renderer, uh, and so this is um, the mesh filter is basically just the shape of the object. The mesh renderer gives that shape uh, color, um, makes it cast shadows, etc. Uh, and the capsule collider is that green outline we were talking about. So if I turn off the mesh renderer, you can see the capsule collider. Um, uh, so we're just going to add another component, and this is going to be called. I'm just going to search. In the little search bar, I'm going to search for character controller. And um, uh, so that's just going to add this uh, fifth component here. So character controller, it has some values which affect uh, how, how much this can move, like on slopes and stuff. But we're just going to leave that alone for now. Um, so uh, to get started, um, in order to make our character controller move, we need to give it a script. So I'm going to open up my scripts folder, click create, go to C sharp script. And that's going to give us a new script. And so I'm going to name it third person controller. And this is all one word, but with each of these 
three words uh, capitalized, so you can kind of you know, read it better. And this is uh, in what's called um, uh, Pascal case, which means um, the first letter of each word is capitalized, including the first word. Um, so uh, let's open this up. So if I double click on it, it's going to open up a program called Mono Develop. In Mono Develop, where we're going to edit our script. So um, notice uh, this script um, has these two usings at the top. Those are called libraries, and that's what's getting imported. Uh, it's like code we can use. Um, and then we have our public class third person controller mono behavior. So um, this line is the like the name of our class and lets us know that um, it's a class and a class is a script. So a script creates a class basically. Um, so that's what we have here. And then um, we have a, a left curly bracket, which if you click on it, shows that it's paired with this one at the bottom. So everything between those curly brackets is what's called our class body. And uh, our class body is where we're going to be editing. So we're not going to put anything outside of these curly brackets, either before or after, um, unless I say so, which we won't today. Uh, so um, like I was saying in the, um, in the drawing here, we're going to need to get these two values. And that's going to be our player's input, right? So we don't know what these values are because the player is going to give them to us by pressing the keys down or pressing the joystick. Um, so we just need to find out uh, what those are going to be. Um, uh, so um, these are both going to be uh, type float. And one is going to be horizontal. And one is going to be vertical. Um, so notice I didn't put public. That's because we don't, uh, the player is going to create these values. We don't need to affect them uh, ever. Um, so we'll just keep them uh, private, basically. Um, so float horizontal, float vertical. Um, and we need to um, assign these every frame of our game. So we need to be checking the whole game if the player is uh, inputting it all. So we're going to assign them in our update method. So uh, just to just to take a step back, uh, our, our class or our script comes with two methods. Um, there's void update, which uh, starts with void, which is the type. Update is the name. It has two parentheses for the arguments and then two curly brackets. And so notice this whole method is inside of our class. Okay. So when I highlight this whole thing, this is the whole method. So when we want to edit this method, we're going to be typing in between its curly brackets. Okay. Um, same with start. Uh, start to whole method has all the, the basic parts of a method. Um, these lines here are called comments. And we're going to be adding some comments. So, uh, so the way you add a comment is two backslashes. Um, but to start, we're going to assign our horizontal um, float uh, to. Um, so we're going to take. If I start typing horizontal, it'll appear um, because we set it up up here. So we're going to assign horizontal to the player's um, horizontal input, basically. Um, so like the left and right arrow. So we're going to say equals. Now we're going to access a Unity class called input. Um, and input has a method on it called get axes. And that's going to let us get the, um, the horizontal axes by name. OK? Um, so um, the if, if we hold our mouse over get axes, uh, hold on. when we first type get axes, so I'm going to delete this again. Input dot get axes, and you can see it appears because it's uh, Unity knows that get axes is a method on input, and you can see here that it's um, this method needs an argument, which is a a string, which is a word that's the axes name, and so. Um, so I'm going to add horizontal. And to, to do a string um, just by like raw by name, uh, you have to have these um, quotes around it. Right parenthesis, and then a semicolon um, to end this line of code. So all we're doing in this line of code is, I'm going to add a comment here, um, getting the horizontal 
input from the player. Okay. So, uh, and just to show you where this axis name is coming from, if we go to Unity, uh, File, or Edit, Project Settings, Input, we have a list of all of our axes and buttons. And you can see there's one called Horizontal. And it has, uh, it's negative. So it, it returns negative one when we press left. It returns positive one when we press right. Uh, or A and D. Um, so it has alt buttons also. So that's why we can do left and right or W, A, S, and D. Um, so I'm going to close this out. Uh, anyway, that's just showing you where I'm getting that name from. Um, so we're going to do the same thing uh, on the line below this. Um, we're going to get the vertical input from the player. And we're going to assign it to our float. So get axes vertical. Okay, so, so now you can see um, we now have a number between negative 1 and 1 on horizontal and negative 1 and 1 on vertical. Um, so we need to turn these two numbers into a direction. And um, the way we're going to do that is we're going to set it as a, a vector 3. So up here, we're going to create a, um, another property which is type vector three. We're gonna call it movement direction. And we're gonna assign it uh, up here at the property to vector three dot zero. And you can see that this is just uh, how we write. Um, uh, actually, we'll do, we'll do it manually. So the way, to, um, the way to create a vector three is we have to use this new keyword and then we have to say what type it is, which is vector three. And then um, we have to pass some numbers into this. So a vector three, uh, here, I'll show you. If we do this and we can, there's different ways to create a vector three. So if we press the down arrow, uh, we can either give it two numbers or three numbers. We're gonna give it three. So we're gonna just say our initial vector three is gonna be zero, zero, zero. So we don't want any movement um, right from the get go. We're gonna set that up in here. Um, so, now what we're going to do uh, after we um, get our vertical and horizontal is we're going to um, assign the vertical and horizontal values to the x and z um, to the x and z field of movement direction. And so um, what that means is we're going to take movement direction. We're going to set it to a new vector 3. So not 0, 0, any, zero, zero, zero anymore. We're going to set it to horizontal. That's going to be our x movement. Uh, 0 is going to be our y movement. And vertical is going to be our z movement. And I'll show you why. Um, so if we go to Unity, we click on our capsule. Um, so X, uh, which is the red arrow, is going to be moving left and right. Okay? And then Y, which is the green arrow, is up and down. So we're, we're not going to, we're going to set that to zero for now. We don't want the character to move up and down. And blue, which is the Z arrow, is going to be forward and back. So we're going to take the vertical input and set it to Z, forward and back, the horizontal input, set it to X, left and right. Um, and then we're going to have the character move there. And the last thing we need to do um, for right now is we need to take the, uh, oh, we need a reference to the character controller. So we added this character controller, but our script doesn't know that the character controller exists. So we need to get a reference to it. So um, just for now, I'm going to set it. I'm going to create a public character controller. So a components and other scripts can be a type uh, and name it controller. Okay. So now we have a we can create a reference to our character controller and we can tell the character controller to do stuff. For instance, if we say controller, so if we if we take our con character controller and tell it to move, which is a method it has, uh, and notice it takes a vector three as an argument. So which direction should it move? We're going to pass movement direction. Um, so 
so this is the uh, this is very basic. Um, uh, so, but this will actually work. So let's go into Unity, and in order for our script to do anything, um, we need to give it to our character. So I'm going to click on the capital. Actually, I'm going to rename this capital to player, just so it's clear. And I'll name I'll rename this plane to ground. And uh, I'm going to um, click add component. And if I search in the search bar up here for third person controller, my script comes up. And if I add it, you can see um, it has one uh, uh, property field to fill in, which is for the controller. So if we go to the script, you can see that because this is public, we can now assign it in Unity. And this one's a character controller. So it wants this character controller. So we can click on the name and drag it into that slot. Now we have player. You can also click on this little target, and player will come up because it has a character controller. So we can assign the player object's character controller to the slot. So if we hit play to test our game, and we press the left or the, the left arrow, it moves left, right, the right arrow, it moves right. So left and right, back and forward. Okay? So it's moving really fast. So we want to be able to control that. Um, so that's uh, something we're going to do next. But uh, right here we have um, our our very basic third person uh, character controller. Right. Um, so I'm going to save this scene, which uh, since I already saved it once, it'll just auto save it to the character controller scene. And um, I'm going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back to continue working on this.